everyone. And it is my honor and my pleasure to be here with my dear sister, my colleague, an expert in this field, in this work of social justice, Coffee Dixon. She is shepherding, navigating, and leading um, a Black women's cooperative in Boston, Massachusetts, the Common Good Cooperative. Um, and she is the focus, one of the focal points of a film that we will be sharing with the FOR community and that the FOR community is co-sponsoring this film, A Reckoning on Boston, on December 9th. Um, we, the details will be on the FOR website as well as all of FOR's social media. In a city with a troubled racial past. I have had enough. This community has had enough. The rich are getting richer. If you're in development here in the city of Boston, this has become your paradise. And the poor are getting desperate. If we look at the people who have made wealth, they are not brown folks. Coffee Dixon. There are more people feeding their beasts than they're human. And Carl Chandler. Everybody has dreams and aspirations. Are trying to move forward by studying the great minds of the past. We take seriously the dictum of Thomas Aquinas. First, seek to understand. In a city that's leaving them behind. Everywhere I go, there's houses being built, but I'm homeless. It is human nature to want every unfair advantage you can get and not to be concerned about others. God, if these people are evicted, where will they go? You are surrounded by a world with which you feel out of step. Every 35 hours, a black man is shot by a cop in America. We throw away red, black, and brown young men at the drop of a hat. We represent the Boston that we're fighting for right here. It becomes like a fire inside of you. And that fire can consume us or it can burn the whole thing down. A reckoning is coming. You are not expected to aspire to excellence. You are expected to make peace with mediocrity. Justice is not just what you do. Justice is who we are. A reckoning in Boston. Um, and here we are just to talk about this in the context of my work with FOR and as the inaugural Wink Fellow, um, and to think about how Walter Wink's work connects to this film and invite the FOR community to join us on December 9th uh, to view this film and to join this panel to have a conversation about how we attend to and address uh, issues of equity, issues of social justice, and issues of repair and reparation in our communities. So Kafi, welcome and thank you for being here this evening with me um, to discuss this upcoming screening of A Reckoning in Boston. And I just wanna start with, since many people may not know who Walter Wink and June Keener Wink are, but Walter Wink is uh, an American theologian who often wrote about uh, the powers, uh, which we'll get to in a second, and June Keener Wink, who was by his side and connected to his work, also engaged with uh, the work of social justice in this world through the arts, through movement, and through the creative imagination of how we can come together as communities to transform them. And so Walter Wink inspires me, especially in relationship to this movie, uh, this documentary, uh, Reckoning in Boston, um, when he writes in chapter four of The Powers That Be, which is gonna be part of our longer series of, of reading Walter Wink. And Walter Wink leans into how we understand the powers that be as really, Re responding to and reacting to um, movements that seek their own liberation, that seek to be transformative in this world and to build a world where all of us are engaged with relationships that are meaningful, 
that are connected to belongingness and that steward and take care of our earth. And Walter Wink often has said that the powers, especially the fallen powers, seek to eliminate, extinguish, right, to violate and dehumanize groups of people, communities that seek that liberation, that seek a way of belonging to each other and to our world, that sustains our everyday world and that seeks repair and healing in spaces of dehumanization. And whenever that the fallen powers witness right, that movement towards social justice, right, that nonviolent movement towards social justice, when they see that opposition to what they seek as, as dominion over others, that the, the fallen powers actually gain momentum, right? and create violence, violence landscapes that they, it, they, they seek to intimidate and create brutal oppositional force to social justice efforts. And I invite that in coffee because, you know, Dr. Wing talks about the fallen powers not as an end, but as a process towards redemption, right? As a process toward that the fallen powers can be redeemed. And that I see your work as part of that work, you know, part of that work to reclaim, re-engage, and actually renew spaces of profound, profound dehumanization. And I, you know, when I witness this documentary that we're sharing with the community, A Reckoning in Boston, I'm actually wanting to hear from you, you know, what this film is to you, what this documentary means in regards to this work of transforming the powers, right, and renewing communities that have been profoundly violated, deeply oppressed by the fallen powers. I thank you, Dr. Ona, and I thank FOR. Um for picking up the conversation and um, being um, willing to um, sit with us and also be witness. And hopefully one of the aspirations of the documentary is to uh, use the perspective of the community audience, um, the documentary and the panel as a tool to reignite a conversation. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking about a panel that we uh, we held last night um, um, uh, digitally in Kansas with um, the Lawrence Art Center, and um, they were doing an exhibit about uh, segregation. And at first, I thought it was Lawrence, Massachusetts. So I was thinking, wow, that's kind of neat. What, what would Lawrence, Massachusetts want with us? Um, but to go into the space with people who in, in the, 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 in, in Kansas, right, um, who are doing this powerful work within themselves around the idea of reparations and reconciliation and healing. And um, where we think that this, these, these conversations only exist in identified locations of progressiveness, the hope that our work expire, uh, inspires you and I is also there are flames of it that are, 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 are igniting, that are sparking and some of um, some spaces where uh, we, we ourselves may have felt that those spaces embodied a hopelessness um, for um, black and brown bodies, for indigenous bodies, um, for people of uh, ethnicity and culture for marginalized uh, communities. But in that panel, what was so powerful was not even the segregation exhibit, not the fact that it was Kansas, but it was something that the facilitator Marlo said, uh, the head of the, the Arts Museum. And her quote was, um, in acknowledging it, that we need a refounding of this country. And I felt like that was, I mean, you have, have, have seeded very deep thoughts and statements to me, Fernando, and, and that one rivaled. Um, 
and I, it touched me so much that as I constantly talk about um, BIPOC communities, their health, their well-being, if, if that if if that is a demand for segregation, if what in the documentary, the violence committed by a city, the annihilation committed by a progressive, liberal, well-meaning city that has a, a a, a buried history um, of racial violence and segregation in our lifetimes, right? It, it, my flirtation with the idea of how do we find peace and wellness away from the violence is for me to pivot to the idea of not just community design, but community design and segregation. And it, it, is that the way we, we redeem ourselves as people who, who, who it, it move away from how American society looks at people of culture and ethnicity as supposedly the, these people that don't want better for themselves and, and their self-satisfied definition of othering as fallen powers, right? Um, the idea an up Uncle Tom's cabin that it, if you allowed yourself to see the person that you were extolling the violence at uh, on as less than human, it made it easier for people who were of deep faith to justify that they weren't violating their spiritual religious ethics by dehumanizing, maiming, killing, abusing. Um, their fellow man. But um, for Marlo to say last night, um, after watching the documentary, uh, to, to make the statement of a reset on the founding of America brings me back to your original statement of how do we provide healing? And is what we need to call for, is there a possibility for us, the reconciliation around the violence in our country to be a reset. Can we reset the founding of this country and reset Japanese internment camp and in, in, internment camps? Can we reset indigenous violence? Um, can we reset um, slavery? Can we reset reset indentured servitude? Can we reset? Um, impoverished southern, southern white communities and uh, white communities up and down the Appalachian um, mountains. And um, if we did call for a reset to the founding of America, what would it look like? And I found that fascinating. Um, and, I, and, and, and I'm thankful that with that statement, we can bring it into talking more about um, how the reckoning in Boston, the documentary came to fruition and what makes it an important tool for people that are looking for change um, uh, to sit with and, 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 and to, to speak about. And in, in a way, this is a tool for change, right? Yeah. Coffee, in a way, as you were saying, it's, it is a way to understand what I understand Watchful Wink doing uh, is, is really, in a way, how can we, when, when Walter Wink talks about redeeming the powers, this is that process, it's the way through, it's the strategies that we can engage with, right? And a reckoning Boston for me is a way to understand how the fallen powers have negatively, so negatively impinged not only on you, mm -hmm. but on the communities that you're working with, that you're from, that you're working with, that you're engaged with, that, that the fallen powers are targeting in a way your actual disappearance from a city, right? From a particular place. It, it's so interesting because, you know, my community now, what I, I don't think a lot of very progressive spaces, um, we were in Chautauqua and I remember driving to Chautauqua with an older um, black Southern man who uh, him and his wife now lived within Chautauqua. And um, again, talking about segregation and he was talking about white militias. And I said, well, we, we wanna connect. 
that it's not just white militias, but that there is a movement within communities of color that um, have established black militias as a response to the history of militia movements in the United States. So in that there, there's a segment of the African-American population that is questioning, and even some in our community, whether fallen powers are redemptive. Mm -hmm. And if not just fallen powers, but um, if communities are not worthy of redemption, then what is the other side of it? Is the, if, if redemption is the conversation and the, the unredeemable is that, the, the gun? Is that the AR-14? Is that the, the violence? Is that the modern day lynching, right? Mm. So where, where there are still so many of us um, who will say and, and, and push back emotionally on the thought of redeeming the following power And sitting last night and hearing the statement of a refounding of the country, the refunding of the country would look like redemption for us all, mm. and all of the violence that we committed. Mm. So I can see where a wink would think that to humanize each other, which should have always been the case, is to say that we are all worthy of redemption. Mm. But the, the case to be made for redeeming the fallen powers means to be able to uplift mm. the oppressed mm. enough that they can grasp the concept and move to a place of healing to say, I am healed enough to offer you forgiveness and redemption. And this, this is part of that work, right, Kathy? I feel like uh, Reckoning in Boston wrestles with that, right? Wrestles deeply with that work. I, when I witness you, and this is why we're inviting people from the FOR community to witness mm -hmm. this film, is that that's the wrestling, that, that's the work of how do we nonviolently mm -hmm. engage with the fallen powers? Right, and what does it mean to engage with reparations? What does it mean to engage with access to land or access to health and yeah. well-being? You know, and I, I witness you wrestling with that. I witness James, who's the director of the film, wrestling with that. And I also witness someone like Walter Wink wrestling with that too, right? That, that we all don't have, we haven't cornered the market on how to right be this transformative but that we are working together as human beings who right have the capacity mm -hmm. and our fallenness to be redeemed right to do this work together right what would walter wink say to james and i mm. right if he was in the room and james you know in fear was saying i don't think my voice belongs in this documentary yeah. Even though he had been a witness to the systemic and structural violence that has been, again, uh, enacted on so many that look like uh, women and men like me. And um, within the documentary, the, the reason the importance of witnessing the documentary is sitting in witness, it's not watching. People say, oh, Kathy, you're a movie star. And it's like, <laughs> I'm an introvert. Um, <laughs> oh, this was a great, even to refer to it as a movie, diminishes yeah. the, the ability to learn from the subject matter of something that there would have been so many in these last five years of this documentary being put together, who would have liked for the documentary to disappear, for yeah. me to disappear, for James to disappear. And by default, not just an annihilation of the conversation, but an annihilation of the subjects that even continue to threaten to bring forth the conversation. And, and the, the deep provocative or thought-provoking um, 
understanding that so many have grasped onto that that PBS public media has grasped onto is one um, thinking about the philosophy of the humanities. Um, thinking about the the, the concept of um, the fallen power still grasping on to you know, um, power with cold, steely hands, right? Mm -hmm. um, not being able to move into the light and how somebody, a kind-hearted person like James, who started out just wanting to document women starting an urban farmer cooperative, became a witness to the system that he never knew existed yeah. and became a witness to a community that he would have sat at their table, had dinner, drank wine with them and thought that they were amazing people, but to see their violence in action and how does he wrestle with the a worthiness of their redemption? Yeah. And that comes across in, again, a city that sees itself as one of the most progressive, most intellectual, most heavily resourced, well-meaning cities and to see the inner in the inner workings of the performative nature of that and the the, the underlying violence that um, is not talked about any longer and there's a preference that should not be talked about. Absolutely, and I think this is part of the reason why witnessing the active engagement with right with this documentary mm -hmm. is a way to understand how we are all part of the strategies, right? The, the approaches, the methods, right? The belongingness to each other in working toward, right? The disproportionate violence that specific groups of people like African-Americans in Boston experience and how we collectively in a place that is quote unquote, so well-meaning as you say, Kathy, oh, right? Um, still can perpetuate such profound violence on its own, right? That, that we can't even see how we've dehumanized black and brown populations in the city of Boston. And that how we've in our, pol in our formal policies, yeah. in our formal methods have displaced, actively displaced black people from the city that we've erased history from the his, from the city, you know. You 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 mentioned to me, and I remember you mentioning to me many years ago. Um, you, you know, you using the term cultural annihilation, and and and, and again, in 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 the hope that I had at the time, I was just like that. Uh, I don't know if it's annihilation, Fernando, right? In, in my head, I don't know if it's annihilation. But, you know, taking it into consideration. And then when over time with this documentary, with these conversations, with this work for women of color, right? Around what we need to understand is shown in the documentary as basic needs work. Basic yeah. needs work with in centering and belonging and community and health, right? But what becomes apparent, the, the, the hypothesis, I want to say, the exploration of is it annihilation or is it not, as I, I may have questioned and some may have questioned, when you connect this documentary with the new um, census data, that the African-American community is the only ethnic community, the only ethnic community in the city of Boston, that is being lost, that its numbers, its populations have drastically dropped. Mm -hmm. And that, that, how do you prepare a space to talk to people who are comfortable with that annihilation? And the, the depth of understanding that the documentary with unintentionally captured that annihilation. Yeah unintentionally that James with a camera and me with an openness to say, come into our world and understand what we understand, understand our perspective, that he stumbled with a camera into capturing the exact measures and, 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 and 
not just policies, but the exact mannerisms and not, not only the way that a city like Boston does annihilation, but the replication of that annihilation on black, brown and indigenous communities throughout this country, how annihilation is replicated and how we co-sign on it. But through James, um, in, 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 in these stars aligning, in this moment in time, I should say, stumbled into a world where he was able to capture and witness how the city of Boston and the powers that be, those fallen powers, move towards annihilation of a culture and an ethnicity. And so this is why we want to invite the FOR community to screen with us this film, A Reckoning on Boston, on December 9th. Um, we, the details of when the screening will be and when the panel will happen will be on the FOR website as well as all of FOR's social media. Yeah. And we invite you to join Coffee, myself, and others on this panel to have a conversation about the documentary, to engage with the fallen powers, and to imagine, really imagine the actual work that will be done towards redemption. <laughs>